Hi, my name is Yuri, and in this video, I'd like to show you how you can use Stoplight for API design with WebMethods API management. Stoplight provides a platform that supports a collaborative approach to design-first APIs. If you want to know more about design-first and its benefits, you can find some interesting links in the description below. I always like to look at API tools within a broader context. How would you actually use these tools together in a modern software delivery process? For this demonstration, I'll be using Stoplight and WebMethods API Gateway, as well as GitHub for version control and CI CD automation. So when you go to the Stoplight website, you can create a free account in your own uh, workspace. The workspace within Stoplight is actually where you'll be organizing all of your API projects and where you'll be collaborating with other people on those APIs. Um, when you create an account, you've got the choice. You can either create an account with your GitHub user um, ID, so you can basically log in with GitHub and use their OAuth integration, or you can create your own Stoplight account, which then you can later link to your GitHub account if you want Stoplight to work with GitHub. I've done the first, so I've actually logged in with my uh, GitHub account, which automatically creates all the integrations that I need to use my GitHub repositories within the Stoplight workspaces. So to create an API project, I've chosen with the option to add a repository from GitHub. But you can see there's other options as well, even obviously in, uh, starting from scratch. So if your connection to GitHub has been set up, you can simply search your repositories in your GitHub account and find the one that you want to include in your Stoplight workspace. Doing so will install webhooks that make sure that the project stays in sync. So it will synchronize the Stoplight workspace with your GitHub repository. Any changes in GitHub will be reflected in the Stoplight workspace or in the project and vice versa. So any changes you do in your Stoplight project when you design the API um, from scratch or um, you know, updates and iterations, those will be committed and pushed into the GitHub repository. I've already added this one to my workspace, so I can't add it again. I'll just go and select it. For this demonstration, I've chosen to use the pet store, uh, OpenAPI 3 example. So I've already imported that into my um, repository, the openapi.json file. And you can see here that I have one API in this uh, project, um, Swagger Pet Store. You see some preview for developer documentation, including the methods, or sorry, the paths and all the methods that are available with complete developer documentation. This is actually a preview of the developer documentation that Stoplight generates based off of the API specification. This is very similar to what you would expect from a Swagger UI, for example. Um, but with Stoplight, um, the default style is a little bit different, and you have a lot of flexibility in terms of customization uh, for the look and feel and the branding of that documentation. But what we're here for is API design. So let's have a look at how you create and edit API specifications. So when you open the editor, Stoplight Studio, I'm using the web-based version, but there's a desktop version of this as well. You um, get your API specification files. And for those API specification files, you see all of the elements essentially that you would typically expect to be present in a Swagger file or an open API file. We obviously have the paths, I'll come back to that later, but we also have the models, so the JSON data models essentially for the different types of resources that we'll be using. We have request bodies and we have response definitions. Now, these models and request bodies are defined within the context of this specific API specification, right? For example, the pet object um, has an ID and names. So all of the fields are defined. You can include uh, references to other objects. So you can essentially compose this from scratch, import it from an API specification, or even generate it from a JSON file that you might have as an example. It can also generate the examples for you to use in test cases, etc. The interesting part about Stoplight, and this is one of the things um, that Stoplight adds in terms of functionality and powerful capabilities versus a simple IDE-based uh, editor, for example, or a text editor, 
is that you can not only define or reuse these models within the context of one API project, but you can actually create design libraries and share those design libraries across many API projects. So you can define models for all of the um, JSON data models that you'd be using across all of the API projects in your organization. You can have standard request bodies, you can have standard response types, uh, including response codes, error messages, and everything else, defined across multiple projects and reuse them in every project. Right here, I've just imported them from my Swagger file and from the Swagger Pet Store specification, but this possibility exists. Then obviously we have our overview here. And what's interesting is that uh, Stoplight provides you a very good form-based editor for um, API specifications. So what you see here is a form-based representation of the API specification. I can simply start to make changes. Um, you'll see all of the different types of metadata you'd expect at the top of a, an open API specification. You can see the paths. For each of the paths, you can identify the methods and you can add methods if you want to, including security scopes, request bodies, response bodies, etc. The Stoplight Studio Editor actually does not require me to write any JSON or YAML um, code. Obviously, it does translate those forms into uh, JSON or YAML. In this case, I've opted for JSON. But using the form editor, I can simply um, define these API specifications in a low-code manner, and the code will be generated for me. What's also really interesting is that the studio has a live preview, so any changes you make are automatically reflected in the live preview. And the live preview is essentially what developers will be seeing in your developer portal when you publish the API and make it available to the consumers of your API, people who are going to use your API product. The preview and the documentation itself also has a try it function, so you can see uh, request bodies, you can send the API requests to test servers or sandboxes, and the portal even generates you code samples for a wide variety of different programming languages, but also for specific programming languages, even you know different libraries. So that's really interesting for developers to see. So all of this is generated for you just based on the specification you've created using these forms. Now. Stoplight Studio is uh, a powerful visual editor for your API specifications, but the platform itself ties together a couple of components that Stoplight provides um, and actually have open source. So they have, for example, um, Spectral, which provides linting for your API specifications, so static analysis of your specification and if it adheres to the best practices that you've defined, and Prism for mocking, dynamic mocking of APIs. Now, this button right here where you see 19 problems is uh, real-time linting of your specification. So this is using Spectral in the back end, um, and you see it, it highlights certain problems with my specification. Luckily, I don't have any errors, but I do have 19 warnings. For example, the contact object in the metadata should have a name and a URL, which it doesn't. It highlights this in code, but you can obviously also go to the form, and there you'll see that the contact and con uh, contact name and contact URL are empty. And according to the rules that we've defined, those should be filled out and made available as metadata. Anyways, I'm not going to save or uh, solve these problems right now. I'm going to leave them in there because what I want to do is show that this type of linting can also be used later on in the CI CD pipeline. So after I've made my changes and I'm happy with the changes that I've made, I can commit and publish commit and push those changes to the um, GitHub repository. Now, my intention with the GitHub repository is to obviously store the source code um, of my API specification. It might be complemented later on with the actual implementation, so a Spring Boot microservice, for example, that implements the code, implements the API itself for this specification. I'm not going to do that in this demonstration, but I am going to show you in a GitHub Actions workflow, how you can then um, automate essentially certain steps. So what I want to do is whenever I push uh, changes from Stoplight into the GitHub repository, 
I want to lint the specification. And actually, it won't only be when I push changes from stoplight. This will change. This will be run with any changes pushed to the master branch. So even if you have your implementation of the API in the repository, even if you say, just change some of the Java code behind it or Python, whatever you've used, it will actually go and lint the specification. Um, linting means that it's going to run that same validation that you saw in the user interface, and it's going to report that as part of my uh, CI CD job. So first it's going to lint the specification. If there are no errors, it is going to continue to the second job, which is to actually deploy that API into Web Methods API Gateway. My API Gateway instance right now is empty. I don't have any managed APIs. But when I push my changes from stoplight, this pipeline will trigger. It will lint the specification. And if no errors are found, it will register the API specification in API Gateway. So let's have a look at how that works. Just commit and publish. It's going to ask me to provide a commit message. I'm going to push my changes. As I, as I push the changes to GitHub, what you'll see is that the changes have been pushed into the repository, so the files have been updated. And there's also one workflow which is running for my commit, with my commit message. And you'll see that this uh, CI-CD workflow has two jobs, linting the specification and updating my development environment if the linting didn't provide any errors. I'm going to let this run for a little while. This takes about a minute or a minute and a half. And I'll come back to you when it's finished. So there you see the lint job has completed. And now it's going to, because it completed successfully, going to push the changes into my API Gateway development instance. What's interesting to see here is that as part of the output of my lint specification job, I have a number of warnings, those same 19 warnings with the same warnings that we saw in Stoplight Studio, but this time integrated into the CI CD pipeline. This is really valuable because um, obviously the validation in Studio is great. While you're designing your API specification, you should not have any errors or warnings ideally, but you can't prevent people from making changes to your specification outside of Studio. The specification is stored in the GitHub repository. Developers might um, make changes to the API specification and push those changes into the repo, which at that time is no longer in sync with your Stoplight version. Good thing is Stoplight will automatically synchronize its workspace with the GitHub repository. But at the time that the developer changes or pushes the changes to the API specification, you want to run that same set of validations to ensure that the specification is adhering to all the rules that you're, you've defined. So that's why it's important that you can also include this in your CI CD pipeline. Meanwhile, we see that our update development job has finished, which means that if I go to my gateway instance and I refresh the screen, I now have my Swagger Pet Store API available with the right version. It has just been deployed and it's been activated. This um, was empty to start with, so right now it has created a new API with the same with the name and the version. As long as we keep registering the same API with the same name and the same version, it'll overwrite this one. So it'll update this definition. The moment that we define a new version for this API, we'll actually create a second version to coexist within the development instance. So this is an iterative approach. I can continue to make changes, push. CI CD will automatically update my development instance. If you want to want, want to know more about how you can automate um, CI CD actions with GitHub Actions and Web Methods API Gateway, I have another blog post and I'll provide the link to the blog post in the description below. This concludes the demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you a very nice day.